Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because we're working on my second ever folding knife. We're making a frame lock folding knife. This is terrifying, but I'm fantastically thrilled to bring you along for the day. So thank you for joining me. Let's get straight back into the mill and get straight to it. Right, so funny thing here, I snapped a drill bit in there, obviously, which means we have a horrible hole and those drill bits didn't make it all the way through even after they snapped, funnily enough. So I'm now gonna take this apart. I'm gonna finish the two millimeter holes in here. Now I've got new drill bits, thank goodness for next day shipping, and I will then come back to this side here, counterbore the 10 millimeter hole, counterbore the 4 millimeter hole, and then we're gonna be able to start working on some of the rest of the stuff here, such as the mechanism. First things first, a little light heat here with the torch is gonna release the super glue. And there we go, broken apart. Thank goodness the holes have at least gone most of the way through. Oh, my eyeballs. Oh, I looked into the smoke again. Gosh, oh, typically smoke. That's not nice. Right, so I am now officially where it was that I was meant to be yesterday when I finished. However, I got that one stuck drill bit out of there with some brute force and tender love and care. And then I then finished off the rest of the holes that weren't complete. So we've counterboard and done the inside work on number two. Now we need to go on to piece number one, which is right here. Now piece number one isn't just requiring a little bit of a counterbore on uh, two holes there. No, in fact, piece number one is also gonna be requiring us to use a slit saw and a ball end mill. Here you go, this is piece number one. Ball end mill to go in here to reduce the thickness of the material so that it'll work as a spring and a slitting saw across here and up there. All in the right locations, hopefully square, neat, proper and good. I'm now doing my one millimeter counterbore here with this little four millimeter end mill. There we go. You'll have also noticed that right in here I threw another drill bit in. I threw a 5.8 millimeter drill bit ready so that when our reamer arrives, we'll have to think about when it is that we ream the hole, but when our reamer arrives, we'll then be able to ream it from this 5.8 thinking about the heat treatment process and whether I do it on the scales or not. You know, it depends. I've had some ideas about different finishing processes, so it might not be an issue to not heat treat the scales. Either which way, we've got a 5.8 millimeter hole now, which gives us that 0.2 millimeters of leeway for reaming and for potential oxidation. We'll see. Next step is using this. This is a 12 millimeter carbide ball end mill. I was gonna use a 10 millimeter one. I decided I think I wanna go bigger. That means that I spread the stress of this spring over a larger area, which will hopefully be conducive to having a better spring. You know, less chance of it going past its yield point and bending. Indeed. Taken the ball end mill, gone in here. I center drilled, then drilled a four millimeter hole right there. I marked off with a center drill where it is that our spring cut needs to go down to. And then I wanted to see if you can do anything else with an end mill. And so I then scribed across at the 90 degrees with the thing spinning, which I should just take it easy on trying things. Knew it didn't really work too well, but it hasn't really done that much damage. It still shows me what's square and it's about to be cut out anyway. Now, talking about cutting out, how is it that I am gonna cut it out? Well, we're gonna do it with a slitting saw. Our old friend, the slitting saw. But I'm not gonna tighten this up right now because there's a big problem. This is an issue. There's an issue with this arbor. Well, what's the problem, Alec? Well, let me show you here. <laughs> Firstly, the... <laughs> Firstly, the slitting saw's on backwards, so I'd have to run it in reverse to cut. But secondly, well, you see that? So when this is down to the height that it needs to be here, with us still being able to clamp onto this, this is so close to touching this. Now, it won't touch that, but it will touch this. So it would be fine right about there, 
until it reached the back of this vice jaw here, at which point the slitting saw would only be about this far into the material. Which is a problem, because when I am this far away from the center of the slitting saw, I get this enormous angle here, which I don't want. By being so far out on the slitting saw, that angle's cutting way far back, and it means that it's gonna end up cutting into the counter ball that I made for our wonderful bronze washer that we're eventually gonna make. So not only is the bottom of our tool gonna be running into our vise, but the actual bridge port itself, the watchamadoodah that's here that the collet goes into, is gonna impede how far in I can cut. So, we're gonna have to do a little bit of lathe turning here so that we can make something that's gonna work for this project. I need at least 30 millimeters of clearance that we've got plenty spare. I'm not gonna make up the whole R8 collet bit. I'm still a complete beginner. What I am gonna do, however, is I'm gonna make a shank with a 20 mil diameter that'll be able to go into a 20 millimeter R8 collet. And then we're gonna go back out to our 32 millimeter diameter, the same diameter as the end of the existing slitting saw arbor. And then it's gonna go down to 25.4 millimeters, which is one inch for six millimeters. And then we're gonna drill and tap to M8 and use a different screw to this because this is Imperial and we're in England. So I'm gonna put this piece of 4340 steel in the chuck here. I'm gonna face it off and I'm gonna turn the diameters it is that I need. And then we'll be able to flip that around, indicate it up, make sure it's all skookum. It's gonna be my first time indicating something in a chuck there. Maybe I'll have to use a full draw chuck like a real, uh, like a real pro. <laughs> I don't know. And then we'll be able to turn down the shank that's actually gonna go into the collet itself. Anyway, turn it on. High speed. Here we go. Okay, and now I'm gonna center drill the end, drill it out, tap it. Six point eight millimeter drill bit for an M8 tap. We'll do a little countersinking here. Bottom tap. There we go, that'll bottom out the third tap. And out she goes. Final diameter needs to be 32. I've got 35 outside diameter now. Pull that puppy into 33. Say 2.34. Yay, bang on. Now I need to turn down about a quarter inch, six millimeters to 25.4 millimeters, which is one inch. And that's what's actually gonna do the uh, holding of the hole saw. So we'll turn her on. That should now fit the hole saw. Oh, <laughs> it's actually a little bit too tight, wonderful. So I'm just gonna take off a smidge. One smidge of coming right up. Oh, that four tenth of a millimeter is all it took. That's exactly what I need. Just gonna freehand a quick chamfer here on the end. Quick touch up with a file. And we'll see uh, how well that works. Bloody marvelous, bloody marvelous. Lovely. Now I'm gonna uh, take this out of the chuck. Give that a little uh, cleaner rooney. Now a four jaw chuck would be better for this. I'm quite certain. I'm sure any knowledge of what it is that I'm doing it also be helpful. But in case you're curious, I don't wanna go through the effort of uh, putting my four jaw chuck on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check that it's running pretty true. <laughs> I have just indicated a three jaw chuck first time ever. That, ladies and gentlemen, is called half a thousandths of wiggleness. And half a thousandths of wiggleness. Oh, it feels so good. But within half a thousand. Oh, it's time to do some more lathing. Bye bye carbide, my old friend. <sighs> And since I have indicated it, this indeed should work just fantastically. I am officially the stupidest person in the world. As, as I said yesterday, I'm impressed I can even put my clothes on. Frankly, it's a shock. 
I'm so unbelievably stupid. What has happened, Alec? Well, while this is cutting, I'm going to explain it. In the middle of uh, telling you all how much of an idiot I am, I would like to first say I'm thrilled with the machining work, the little turning work I did there. I know, it's super simple. I know that people do a million times more complicated things, but I took measurements and took my time and I actually got it. Pretty, it's a pretty decent degree of precision. The problem is... <laughs> this is a three-inch slitting saw. Three-inch slitting saw. I designed this folding knife and I know precisely the measurement of the cut that this that we've got to make. It's 53 millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> oh my sweet goodness gracious me. How long did you take to make that thing? Like an hour's work. <laughs> <laughs> One hour's work wasted, ladies and gentlemen, because this three-inch slitting saw will poke out that much. Three-inch slitting saw, not a good idea. But ladies and gentlemen, here in the United Kingdom, there is an incredible thing called next day delivery. It is 4.53 in the evening. I'll call up a tooling supplier. Do you guys have a slitting saw? Nah, sorry. Call up another tooling supplier. Hey, I, uh, I know it's really late. Is it early enough to get a next day delivery from you guys? No, mate. Sorry, mate. Too late. Uh, you probably won't find anyone that will. Oh, goodness. All right, all right, okay. Let me try one more place. One more place. Somebody please get me a slitting saw tomorrow. Oh, you guys do next day delivery until 7 p.m.? Well, that's great. So, I have ordered myself, not one, not two, but three slitting saws that are two inches in diameter, or up by 50 mil in diameter, and 0 0.8 mil thick. I wanted to do a half mil cut, they only had 0 0.8 mil. Oh well, it is what it is. Am I gonna complain that much that it's 0 0.8 millimeters and not half a millimeter? Nah, not really. No, I'm pretty happy. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna face off this end piece and zero it. This time, not only do we have to make the end piece, but we gotta make a whole new little uh, caparoonie like this. And we get to choose how we make it completely because we're making the caparoonie. I am gonna make it. We have a 13 millimeter hole in the 50 millimeter slitting saw. <sighs> On the fly engineering. 13 millimeters, we'll share for it. So we are gonna turn this down to 18 millimeters across this whole thing. Madu ha here. Ooh, you know what I can use? <laughs> We're gonna use a mic, measurement mic, also known as a poor man's G clamp. 18.691. Somebody's gonna get mad at me. <laughs> Don't leave your micrometer on the lane! He'll fall off and kill somebody! 3 hole saw arbors. I have one that goes straight into an R8 spindle. I have another for a 1 inch bore slitting disc, but this one is long reach and it goes into a 20 millimeter collet. And I have another, which is long reach, 13 millimeter bore, suitable for a 50 millimeter round, 13 millimeter bore slitting disc that goes into a 16 millimeter collet. Whew. Okay, let's make some more stuff. Well, we have some material that's arrived. Here is some bronze, some 10 millimeter or, no, 3 8. Are you kidding me? I bought all those collets for my collet chuck and I didn't get a 3 8 inch collet. That was silly. <laughs> Did I seriously buy 3 8 of an inch bronze without a 3 8 inch collet? You are a one silly billy, Alec. <laughs> Ooh, you know what I can hold in a collet? I also have some 5 eighths of an inch phosphor bronze. And oh, ho, 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 ho. ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, and really not for much reason right now, but other than just the simple joy of doing it, Alex Steele is using a collet chuck. There we go. There we go. Make sure this is all nice and clean here. <clears throat> and in with the collet chuck we go for the first 
time. Oh boy, let's hope it fits. Ha ha, it fits! Yeah. There we go. Let's hope it's on, right? No, I don't have a doohickey for this. I'll have to make one. That'll be a project for another video. <laughs> what is going on? Maybe it isn't a 5C collar? So I'm over here trying to trying to get this to work, and I'm wondering why is this not working? I'm trying to turn this, and it's just not drawing back in there. And I was sure that this is a 5C collet chuck. It has five on it, right? And I remember a few months ago, I thought, you know, I'm just gonna buy one 5C collet just to see if it fits. And you know what I probably did? I probably put that puppy in there like that, like gave this a light spin and went, oh yeah, that's a 5C collet chuck right there. Now, what is the problem with doing that? Well, by not actually drawing the collet in there the whole way, I didn't discover that this is a 9252 collet chuck. And in fact, there is a whole, there are indeed a host of internet forum posts about people complaining that Colchester made this, or True Grip, that True Grip made a collet chuck without making it 5C. They made it their own, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, fancy, fancy, fancy 9252 or 9244, whatever it is. And those collets are like impossible to get a hold of. So either I com completely wasted my time and the money of buying all the collets, or I hear there is potentially a way to actually modify this chuck to work with a 5C collet. Am I gonna do that now? No, probably not, it's late in the evening. Will I do it someday? Ah, uh, maybe. See, I got distracted there for two and a half hours and started taking it apart. I have no idea if I'm ever gonna actually be able to make this thing work with 5C collets. It might be a fun little side project to try, but it's a terrible way to make progress on this frame lock folding knife, and that's why you should subscribe so that you can see the progress that we make tomorrow and in the next days and in the next days and in the next days because we are making stuff every day and it is a total, total pleasure to bring you along. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye.